tell me, uh, what do you do, man? Uh, so I started this uh, business called Where's the Food Truck? Um, and what we do is we connect foodies with food trucks. We help the food truckers kind of market themselves, get their names out there, uh, share their location, just, you know, overall be more successful in business. Awesome. So how long have you been doing this for now? Uh, I started this, um, well, it'll almost be three years ago now. We launched about two and a half years ago. So I put some time into um, idea and then building it out, the app, the development, all that stuff. Um, yeah. And uh, we started in Vegas, just the Las Vegas market, and expanded to a couple other markets since then. Awesome. Fantastic. So uh, tell, tell me a bit about the market just in general, because you're primarily focused on food trucks by the side of it, right? Yeah. So we're focused on like gourmet food trucks, you know, the, the new age, like in the last 10 years, kind of the food trucks that popped up that have nice wraps on the outside of the trucks. They're chef driven. They're really in, have inspired menus. That's kind of what we're aiming for. Uh, the kind of, kind of venue that a uh, foodie might try and be looking for and chase down and searching for on social media and all. Um, that market in the U.S., there's over 23,000 gourmet food trucks uh, that fit that category. Uh, we, we say like our demographic as far as uh, foodies or customers go are pretty much millennials. Anybody that's in between 20 and 35 is our, is our like really target market. Um, and then, of course, people, you know, younger and older than that go out to food truck events and check out food trucks. But really, there's like 21 million millennials in, in the U.S. right now. And it's, it's funny, actually, in the food truck industry, uh, you know, a lot of the, the articles I read say that the millennial generation are also called the food truck generation. I don't know if that's a little biased, but. <laughs> well, uh, I know I, I eat at a lot of food trucks uh, here in New York City. We have them all over. And uh there are quick, easy places to get food, and there's a lot of great ones, especially over in Williamsburg. Um, so tell me, like, what markets are you currently uh, in right now? So we're in Las Vegas. We're also in Salt Lake City, Colorado Springs. Uh, we're starting to get some traction in Phoenix as well as Charlotte. Awesome. Fantastic. I love uh, Char Char So how did you end up in Charlotte? That's uh, very different from the rest of them. Yeah, and it's a three-hour difference, so it's uh, it's a little bit more difficult to make those phone calls and be a little bit active while they're active. Um, yeah, so we had, uh, you know, most of those markets that we're in, they're all mid-sized markets. They have big um, food truck uh, communities, and they've got a decent amount of uh, you know residents in that in those areas. Uh, the the ones that we're really in, we had been contacted. Uh, buy a couple of food trucks and maybe the president of the food truck association or like one big influencer there in that community that said, Hey, you know, we, we're, we've been looking for something like this. We've got X amount of food trucks that we all want to do something like this. How do we get involved? And, uh, and then, you know, we kind of built out that relationship like that. Oh, fantastic. So it's like pretty much someone reached out to you and you're like, why not give it a stab? Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. So t tell me about your user base right now. Like what, what, what numbers are you seeing and what type of like interactions are you seeing so far? Um, so I'll, I'll touch on both the food truck side and, and the um, customer side. Awesome. On, um, on the food truck side, we've got just about 400 um, active accounts right now. And since COVID, we've actually seen a 200% increase in new signups um, versus the, the few months before that. And then um, on the foodie side or the customer side, we're at um, like 20, a little over 22,000 active users right now. And um, we're at about 150% uh, above the normal sign-up rate versus pre-COVID. And, uh, and what's great about the customer side, since COVID, we've actually seen a, a little over 200% uptick in engagement. So not only are we getting more customers on a more often basis, but we're seeing them use the app more often and hunt down food trucks more often. Oh, that's, that's actually really, really good to hear. So yeah. how much are you looking to raise? Uh, we're looking to raise up to 250,000. Um, most of that's gonna go towards marketing. At this point, uh, we've got a great development, uh, I mean, a great product developed. And uh, what we find, you know, wherever we go and, and with most of the foodies that we talk to, is that it's just awareness that we need at this point. Awesome. Um, just so uh, I'm really intrigued in this, um, why not more? Uh, why, why, why only 250K? Uh, so in our projections, I don't see one that we need more. 
to really get going to to get a little bit more traction. Um, we'll do a, a follow up round probably about a year from now. But right now, you know, 250 I think is a good start just to to get some more growth, some more traction, prove some uh, some of our successes uh, along our roadmap, um, and then do a, a follow up raise. And um, yeah, I mean that's that's the best answer I can give. <laughs> Fantastic. So I, I, I want to stick with this this uh, little area for a little bit longer. Um, with the 250K, I know you said a lot of that is going towards marketing. Are, are you looking at bringing on additional hires or like what else is the money going to be spent on? Um, the more you could break this down, the better it'd be for me. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, about 53% goes towards marketing, both digital and print, like traditional print. Um, 20, a little over 20% um, goes towards new hires. So, um, you know, awareness, follow up and support is, uh, is kind of what we're aiming for, right? So the awareness is mostly the digital marketing and traditional marketing. And then the follow up and support is on the food truck side. So um, when we make an account for a food truck, uh, you know, they're busy running their businesses. They got a hundred different hats on running their businesses. So sometimes they need a reminder or help getting logged in. Some of these guys aren't really technical either. So. Uh, we, I, the follow up in a phone call email is building out a good process to really help them download the app, get logged in, uh, help them figure out the features, um, integrate with the uh, mobile ordering that we do. A lot of that's uh, time consuming and we need, you know, two or three hands on deck to actually make those outbound calls. Awesome. Fantastic. So uh, you mentioned briefly the, uh, the mobile ordering. Uh, can you go a little bit more into that? Cause from what I understand, uh, that's new. Yeah, so that's uh, we're actually expecting to launch that this week. We're really excited about that. So um, we had always been considering the mobile ordering, um, but from coming from our restaurant background, uh, kind of saw that mobile ordering on a small business side might be a little bit difficult. In the last couple of years, there's been a lot of advances with uh, point of sales and um, and integrations and stuff like that. So um, one, the food trucks had been requesting it, so we were considering it anyway. And with COVID. Um, we saw food trucks everywhere posting, hey, text me your order, email me your order, uh, you know, PayPal me your order, call me. And seeing that there's only typically, you know, one, two or three staff members on a food truck, like having somebody answer that phone or reply via text or checking their emails, like one, you're taking up all kinds of labor, time and effort. And then two, you're going to miss orders or you're going to get orders wrong or you're just spending all your time telling people what your menu is. Um, so we, we pushed this a little bit ahead of, um, of what our roadmap kind of had designed for mobile ordering. Um, we've integrated with Square. It's completely integrated. All the food truck has to do is log into their Square account and then everything pulls up and, and syncs with, with our app for the customers to see and order through. Uh, I mean, the food truck doesn't even know really that it's coming through us. It, it all looks exactly the same. Um, and we're really excited about that. We've actually had a number of food trucks here in town and in, in Salt Lake um, where we're kind of mostly active with our communications uh, contact us that had kind of in the past not really been too interested because they, they didn't, maybe they were overwhelmed with the tech side of it. Now they're calling us and they're like, Hey, you know what? Like I heard you're doing mobile ordering now. Like how do I get involved in that? Like, can you show me what this is? So yeah, I mean, this is, this is going to be a, a game changer for us and for the food trucks, help them all, um, offer this as a feature. Awesome. Can you break down your, uh, basically, how do you make money? Um, yes. that's, that'd be great. So our revenue streams are, are threefold. So we have a subscription model for the food trucks. So there's a basic account, which is free. And then there's two premier levels or two paid levels. There's premier and elite. Um, that's, um, one basic revenue model that accounts for about 30% of our revenues. Um, the second, uh, revenue stream is uh, catering and scheduling revenue. So we act as a lead generation management uh, and sourcing for uh, scheduling opportunities as well as catering. Uh, we take a fee off of that from the food truck. Um, that's a uh, before COVID. That was a, a big revenue stream, probably about sixty percent or so. Um, that has obviously died down. There aren't as many events going on, and a lot of uh, businesses are working remotely. Uh, so we've, we've toned that down in our projections still accounts for about 15% of our revenues. 
And then the in-app ordering, um, we're estimating right now that we'll get about uh, at least 20 um, orders per food truck um, that is integrated with mobile ordering through our app. We'll get about 20 orders per week. And that accounts for about 65% of our revenues now. In-app ordering is huge. And, um, and what we've, the feedback that we've gotten from, <clears throat> from food trucks out there that already offer like online ordering through their website is that at certain sites where they go, they do like 90% of their orders through, um, through their website. Mm -hmm. um, and the average, average um, ticket count for a food truck is like 100 to 150 at most stops. So that's like 90 to 130 or so um, orders that they're doing a day. Um, really, I, I think that 20 orders a week through our app is, is a very low projection, but we'll see. Oh, that, that's actually really, really unique. I love that. So can you walk me through like your vision and stuff like that? Like where, where do you see, uh, where's the food truck in like the next, you know, two, four, six, ten 10 years from now? Yes. Um, so we started this because we saw the, um, that the small business operator in the food truck side uh, could use a little help, right? Like uh, I, I come from big restaurant chains and corporations and I've seen, you know, all the processes that they have in place. And I've seen, you know, line cooks and managers and, you know, early on chefs um, leave that environment to try and start their own, either brick and mortar or food truck. What we see is like, they don't have some of those best practices in place. So this being one, you know, how to market yourself is basically, what our app is marketing and then sales now with with the uh, mobile ordering integration um but really you know helping them with um costing out their food sourcing their food you know good places to find um to find their commissary best practices you know the whole gamut we really see like we are what will help increase the success of the industry as a whole awesome awesome do you, do you have any uh, new features or stuff in your idea on the roadmap uh, to, to launch out? And like, when do you think something like that will hit? Yeah, I've got, um, so I've, uh, there's a couple little, uh, little wrinkles to iron out in the mobile ordering that we'll be doing over the next two or three weeks. And then I've got uh, a couple of cool features that um, are kind of so uh, that are uh, focused around social media that we'll be putting into place uh, that kind of integrate with the app. And then, um, you know, like a lot of restaurants and uh, and businesses in general like to like to offer um, like loyalty and rewards programs. Mm -hmm. uh, food trucks is difficult for them to do that because you know they're they're kind of everywhere, so they don't see the same customers on a regular basis. Um, so we want to put in a place like a loyalty rewards program that kind of encompasses the whole industry. So if you use our app, then there's a reward, not so much like you have to use that same food truck. That's going to be one of the big things that uh, that we work on next. Excellent. Excellent. No, I really love that. Um, Nicholas, I appreciate your time very much. Um, for anybody else uh, out here listening to this, if you do have any additional questions, fire them my way. Um, I'll be happy to relay them, Nicholas, and try to get an answer back to you. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I appreciate your time. I'm really excited to uh, be on board. And uh, yeah, let's crush this.